can already tell it's going to be one of those days where the sun and the clouds and post-production Barb is just going to think it's a lighting nightmare. Hi everyone! Welcome back. Another video. You know the days. You know the days where... So you know the days where you have great plans. Big plans. You're going to accomplish a lot. And then it just doesn't happen. Not the way you hoped it would. That's today. But I'm going to salvage it. We are going to salvage the day. And we're going to start with a video because that's fun, right? Yeah, video fun. And what I wanted to do in this video is share with you a few picture books in which I think the art is unique and involves mostly paper cut, but some unique art styles. These are all books that are not mainstream books and so most people are not familiar with them but I think they are incredibly artistic and beautiful and I wanted to share them because I think they are inspiring. In my experience with paper cut art and children's books um, they tend to be, it doesn't have to be, but they often are what I call quiet books. Interesting. I think I might restart this video. No, not. What I mean by a quiet book is either quiet because there's no text, which we will have a couple of those, or it's quiet in terms of it's more meditation on, on something rather than this story where if you think of storytelling where you have peaks and nadirs and, and you're oh my gosh, the world is ending, but no, we saved ourselves. And then, oh no, here's the next catastrophe, but wait, we got through it. And that which you ordinarily think of as a story. Um, these are less so that way. They're, they're just, they're more meditations on, on feeling or an experience. I'm a big believer in quiet books for children for a number of reasons. One, it lets the children focus more on the art. And because the book is quieter, it asks quite a lot of the the reader if even if there's no text to engage with it so quiet books are a way to really sit with children and and ask them you know what do you think of these pictures or what do you like about this art or what do you think the story is saying especially in the case of books where there is no text because then you really have to sit there and ask them what do you think this means and how do you think they feel? Children are not always used to quiet books, so sometimes this can take a little bit of time, but it's really worth it. Um, and once you learn and you teach them how to engage with this story, you are actually teaching them storytelling skills. So if you're looking to even teach yourself more about storytelling, particularly if you're in thinking of teaching yourself about storytelling as it pertains to art, I highly, highly recommend these books and they're totally beautiful. So without further ado, let's look at some beautiful, beautiful books. The first one I want to show you, I have two by the, um, the same author and these must just take her for ever to do but they're gorgeous they're stunning and her name is she's going now by camille i'm going to slaughter this last name but garosh garosh um she initially went by princess cam cam so her first book is by princess cam cam her second book is by camille garosh and they are fox's garden and the snow rabbit they are textless and her her style is that she does paper cut art and she cuts everything out and it's it's like she constructed all of these scenes from paper that she drew on and you know painted and colored and then cut them all out and then layered them up into depth and then photographed them i mean laborious this must have been laborious laborious and you see how she even lights up i mean there are lights on in the house there and you see all of the depth and how even with when she has the fox with the baby foxes 
those are all separate pieces um it's a beautiful beautiful book and her her narratives and stories are all so incredibly sweet the snow rabbit also set in the winter time um is more of a daylight book and it has this silvery feel to it and it's it's much more close up so whereas i the fox garden is a little bit back um snow rabbit is a bit zoomed up and the styling on these is just incredible i think the snow rabbit really gets me because the woods are quite complex that she does and the way that she layers it is absolutely beautiful and you really do look at it and go how did you do that um, and she clearly uses paper cut she clearly uses colored pencil um, paint it is they're just it, they're beautiful beautiful books so highly recommend both of these also dropping things in this vein is this book and it's called my father's arms are a boat now i will say up front this book is about death so just putting that out there if you're thinking about buying books for children i think um, it's a wonderful introduction to death and getting a child to sort of understand it and talk about it it doesn't outright say someone died but it's clearly about a son and his father coping with their mother not being there it employs that same paper cut art this one has text but it's really about just a conversation between the son and his father and um, the, the interesting thing about this one is that it goes a bit more abstract with some of the things that it's doing. So whereas Camille's books are very literal in terms of the, the action that you see and what you're seeing on the page, um, My Father's Arms Are a Boat, the placement of things is suggestive, employing I'd say more pen, it's less, less paint, less color more pen and ink almost with the paper cuts overall the the depth is not there in terms of the the layering and i think the complexity of um camille's books but it's really beautiful and I, I, I like the space dimensions that he has it's interesting because these feel more like a movie to me whereas this feels more like a play where you have minimal set. And this one I love as well because he's actually built, you know, the couch or the countertop or things like that. It's minimal purposefully in a, a very, very compelling way. So I think this is a stunning book as well. These just, oh, these just make me want to do paper cut art. This last book is not paper cut art. It's printmaking, but it employs uh, layers of paper and it's called Ghosts in the House. And the story is there's this little witch and she moves into a house. But there's a problem. It's haunted. And so she basically goes through the book and she um, catches all of the ghosts. But what I love about this book is that combination of printmaking and then tissue paper art that she uses, that they use for, for the ghosts themselves. It's a cheery little book and it is incredibly fantastic in its reduction of line because it's printmaking and so Whereas something like Fox's Garden, you have a lot more in terms of line and drawing and color and it's gorgeous, but it's intense that way because there's so much media coming at you and, and, and there's a lot happening. But this, because it reduces it to two colors, I mean, actually really, I mean, it's one color, orange and then black. Um, and then white, I suppose, but the, the limited color palette and that it's printmaking so you have very simple shapes to craft everything make this to me a tremendously artistic book and i think there is a great art in reducing 
something down to its minimal components and then being able to convey that. That's something that for my own art, I'm always, always working on. Um, I love that minimalism while maximizing emotion. Um, this book is so much fun that way. This book also succeeds tremendously well for its movement on the pages, which I think is also brilliant. I highly recommend all of these to anyone who is interested in illustrating, interested in visual storytelling. How do you tell a story in pictures? How do pictures work with words? Um, where do you do your page turns? How do you create action on a page? How do you decide if your page is, if your book is this size or if your book is this size? All these sorts of questions that you should be asking yourself if you're interested in being an illustrator. These books will teach you. Um, for me, they are art books. I collect books just as art books. I and I rotate them on my coffee table so that when people come over, they can see all sorts of different kinds of art books. And this is definitely, these, these fall into that category. So I'm so excited. I could talk about illustration and books and picture books all day long. I hope this was helpful. Hope it's interesting. If you like this video, if you're interested in more examples of books in which you tell story through art, or if you're interested in learning more about storytelling, please give this video a big thumbs up and leave questions and thoughts in the links below because this I love to talk about and we could just have a field day. Hope you're having a great day. I will see you very soon. Bye.